universe. There is no center of the universe. But if there was one, there is no center of the universe. <laughs> there is no center of the universe, guys. A, an actual center does not exist in the universe. Oh boy. So uh yeah, we're gonna get into this. This is like the funniest uh dumb person I think I've ever seen on the internet. And it's gonna be fun to watch this guy try so hard to tear apart our raw and he just fails miserably. We're gonna get into it. I am Britley, and this is the Punk Apostate. Let's go. <laughs> So I found this guy. I don't know. It just came up in my feed. It's something like adventurous politics. Uh, it's, he's got like, he's small. You know, he's only got like 2,000 subscribers, something like that. Um, still bigger than me. So I feel like it's still, he's still game. You know, it's, you just don't want to, you, you just don't want to like go after somebody that's smaller than you. You know what I mean? Because then you end up giving them more attention than, uh, they deserve really so uh he's still still fair game in, in my book so we're gonna go after this dude uh apparently he doesn't wow he just doesn't know anything about anything and it's it's quite funny how smug he is while also being so stupid it's amazing so let's get into it i'm on twitch and kick um one of my one of my regulars has asked me to dig into um aaron raw commenting on the house speaker so it's Aaron Ra. I mean, it's not difficult to read that name, right? Like A R O N R N Aaron Ra, <laughs> not Aaron Ra. Okay, like this is. <laughs> so, and he's given me a timestamp, five to fifteen minutes. So, we're gonna look at this. Let's go. Than the founders ever were. So we didn't start off the way Mikey wants you to think we did, and the trend is sadly. Oh, a political and revised the Bible by removing all the supernatural stuff that he found so hard to believe. The founders were profoundly philosophical and political scholars and deep thinkers. And today we'll get an occasional Ivy League magna cum laude political science scholar. But beyond that, modern politicians are not celebrated thinkers like some of our. This, this guy just held up Obama as a celebrated thinker. <laughs> Why, why is this difficult? He didn't hold him up as a celebrated thinker. He said the politicians of today are not celebrated thinkers. And he said every once in a while you'll have a political science scholar, which Obama absolutely is. <laughs> this guy just held up the dude who smoked crack and it was a community organizer. As a, as, oh, uh, wow. Okay. So we're, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out where he got this smoke and crack thing from, right? But I think I figured it out. And it is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Uh, so let me check this out. Look. Oh, look. This is, oh, this just happened. This is pretty, pretty new. Happened 2023. So you're on this one. Let's see here. Tucker Carlson interviewed con artists. Who claims he smoked crack and had sex with Barack Obama? <laughs> really high high brow stuff, you know. Is this you know, Tucker's always going to have the most non conspiratorial takes, you know. That's just how all of this goes. You're just a guy who's in town for the night, and it sounds like you're looking to party. Right? Yeah, pulled up in a bar outside, and there's this guy that's introduced to me as Barack Obama. I had given Barack $250 to pay for Coke. I start putting a line on a CD tray to snort, and next thing I know, he's got a little pipe and he's smoking. So I just started rubbing my hand along this thigh to see where it was going, and it went the direction I had intended it to go. Even though you had sex with him twice, you did cocaine with him, watch him smoke crack twice. You had no idea who he was. I had no idea who he was. Let me just ask the obvious question. What was Obama like on crack? Um, is it your sense that that's who Obama is, just transactional or that he's bisexual or like, what is this? It definitely wasn't Barack's first time. And I would almost be willing to bet you it wasn't as long. 
the guy's running for president and credible information comes out that he's smoking crack and having sex with dudes, that seems like a story. Well, it would be a story if the media really cared about telling people the truth. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. Right. <laughs> That's the thing to believe. Believe that guy. That guy is just a bastion of reliability as far as, you know. Uh, sourcing goes, you know, that's that that's your best source right there. You know, some guy that claims to be doing the coke and the sex with Obama. That's that, that guy could not possibly be telling anything that's not true. The fact that he, this guy picked that story is, is, fa- is phenomenal. And it's it's you know, it's just happened recently. So this it's clearly on this guy's mind. And it just kind of shows you the kind of media that this dude finds convincing. Whoever this this genius is, that this adventurous politics guy. Another thing that's really funny, you know, it's really funny about this video right here uh, is, <laughs> check it out. This guy has two point five five thousand subscribers, right? Um, he's got uh, eight hundred and eight views and four likes. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let him continue on a bit and continue to embarrass himself. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, Aaron. All right. Yeah. If Obama is the kind of person you idolize as being a great political thinker. Well, I already knew everything I needed to know about you, but that says a lot more. Founders were, and many of our politicians now are more fanatically religious than the founders. Wait, the first commandment contradicts the first amendment. No, the fuck it doesn't. Yes, it does. The first, all right, let's go over this real quick. Okay, let's see. The first commandment is thou shall not have any gods before me. In other words, you only get to worship the one God, right? Yeah, so the first amendment or the first commandment saying that you can only worship the one, uh, you know, the one God is in direct conflict with the first amendment that says that you, uh, that they will, we will never make any law respecting a religion or limiting the rights to worship thereof, you know, like just like limiting the right to worship any God, you know, which is exactly what the first commandment is uh, commanding against worshiping any God. So it is absolutely in contradiction with the first amendment. Like, I don't know how you, t- <laughs> I, he must not know either of these. I don't think he knows what the first commandment is. He probably thinks it's like, don't steal or something stupid. <laughs> you know, because this guy's not, he's not working with the whole set of crants. You know what I mean? Like, he's just not. <laughs> and that we evolved from primordial slime and all the rest. And they're thinking through the implications of all this. And they said, now listen, here's the thing. If all that's true, you know, there really probably isn't a God anyway. Right? There really isn't a creator because we evolved and if and, you say and, so, Hoser. become so smart now, which doesn't say- G- Good one, buddy. You got him. the center of the universe. Notice the irony that defenders of the faith only ever argue in bad faith, always misrepresenting the opposing position. But from an atheistic, skeptical science perspective- <sighs> I, I didn't hear anything bad faith there, but okay. Yeah, of course you didn't. <laughs> you don't know the p- opposing position, man. <laughs> Clearly, you don't even know what the First Amendment is or the First Commandment. First, there is no center of the universe, but if there was one, there is no center of the universe. <laughs> wow, unbelievable! There is no center of the universe, guys. A, an actual center does not exist in the universe. You know, the thing that we've used telescopes to look towards and we can objectively tell that there is indeed something at the center of the universe, most likely a supermassive black hole that is unfathomably massive. Uh, yeah. What? What is he even talking about? There is no supermassive black hole at the, at the center of the... Where is he getting his information from? I don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's not there. There is a <laughs> fucking this guy is so fucking stupid. He doesn't even know science. He puts all of his stock and all of his faith in humans' understanding of science, and he doesn't even fucking know that. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look at this real quick.
Oh man. Yeah. Well, that's, how long did that take? How long did that take to check? And it was like, what, like three or four seconds, you know, <laughs> too, too much for this guy. I'm sure, you know, it's just difficult. It's difficult being extremely intellectually lazy. You know, it's difficult being that. Cause you know, you don't want to find that you're laughing at something uh, and acting like it's so not true. And then, you know, turn around and find out that it's, uh, you know, that R and Ra might know more about science than you genius. <laughs> <sighs> Kate, do you agree that Aaron Ra looks like Anton LaVey? Um, uh, I can kind of see it, except that guy is objectively more handsome than Aaron Ra. That, and that's not how you use the word objective. But right, I'm sure you'd... Well, I don't even know why I'm correcting that sort of thing. That's definitely something this guy doesn't understand. Who looks like he got beaten with an ugly stick. Yeah. You're right. And, and you know what you should look like? is a bad guy in a Jason Statham movie. Yeah, that's what you got, you know. <laughs> that that's what you need to look like. That that's what good looking looks like is, you know, hair slicked back, you know, uh maybe a long black trench coat, maybe an Uzi, I don't, you know. Uh <laughs> geez, this guy looks look at this guy. Look at this guy's face. <laughs> that that he's got his hair slicked back. He is the just quintessential action movie bad guy that gets killed in the first fight that is this guy right here <laughs> it was i wonder if that's satan's favorite way to wait to way to wear facial hair Possibly. <laughs> it's weird to say that they look similar i'm not going to pull up a picture of anton levey uh if looking similar uh means that you have a similar looking mustache and that's it because Arn Raw is not a skinny guy. He's not bald. Uh, you know, he's he's got long flowing hair. <laughs> like he basically looks exactly the opposite of Antoine LeVay, except for the mustache. And that's literally it. <laughs> just like just like some of the lower demons like to color code their humans with oh, hair with, dye. With hair dye. Yep. And what the hell kind of joke was that? And oh, and making them extremely fat. Yeah, a little bit of fat phobia there, you know, just to be just to, to solidify extra douchey. You know, that's a good job, man. You are just completely making yourself the bad guy at the beginning of a Jason Statham movie that gets killed in the first fight. More and more with every word that comes out of your face. It wouldn't be us, as many godless philosophers have already pointed out. How we live on an insignificant planet humdrum star lost between two spiral arms of the outskirts of the galaxy which is a member of a sparse cluster of galaxies he talks about arguing in bad faith and yet he makes one of the most absurd arguments that you can make in my opinion our location makes us insignificant we live on a humdrum planet we live on the only known planet to sustain life that makes us the very opposite of a humdrum planet. We live on literally the only planet known to sustain life. We're on that planet, genius. Oh my God. It's, this is like me saying that my house is like the place where that the fun happens. You know, the, my place is where all the jokes happen, you know, and all the laughs happen, right? Um, because I'm in my house. That's the reason that I know that, right? But I wouldn't be so stupid to think that my house has more significant fun than any other place because I know that it's just my house is the only place that I know. This planet is the only place that we know. <laughs> We're on this planet. Of course, we know it's the, the one that sustains life, but to be able like to say that it's the only one that sustains, that we know of, yeah, because we're on it. Of course, it's the only one that we know of. <laughs> it's like, you know, my goodness. Like, what are you talking about? We have to go light years. And the the, the cosmos is huge. It, there could be billions of Earth-like planets that we have, you know, that we have no access to. So sitting here and saying that, like, oh, this is the main one, you know, this is the only one that we know of that, uh, you know, sustains life and, and acting like that makes us significant when we are on that planet is just so idiotic. It's hilarious. <laughs> I'm not saying we are the only one because we don't know that for sure. 
But the fact that we've looked at many, many thousands of planets and we're so far the only one that sustains life makes us the exact opposite of a humdrum planet. We are where the fucking party is. <laughs> God, this guy is like a child. It's like, it's like a middle schooler is making a video trying to take down Aaron Rock. That, that's what this seems like. Of course there's a black hole at the center of the universe, and this Aaron Rock guy says there is no center of the universe. What an idiot. <laughs> This is the only place that's got something going on as far as we know. As far as we know. Because we're on this planet, genius. This is such a dumb argument. I agree. But uh, it's, it's you. It's you that's making it. Not not, not his argument. Your argument. That's the dumb one. Oh, yeah. And I'm not saying there isn't. I'm not saying we are the only planet with life. But what I'm saying is it is abundantly clear, even if there are, let's say... Let's say for every 10,000 planets, one sustains life. That still means that Earth is the exception, not the rule. But that, if you take that out of billions, <laughs> then that makes us, uh, that would make us one of millions, and that would be very insignificant. That's it's like, it's, it's like this guy doesn't understand just basics. The basics of math, like he's like, it still means we're more special than every other planet. If you just go from every planet, <laughs> then we're more special than those. Okay, according to you, because again, you're the one on the planet that you think is special. <laughs> like, this is so funny. Which still means that we are not on a humdrum planet in some backwoods of the universe where nothing significant is happening. The entire pseudo philosophical idea that there's nothing special about earth and that it's just going to fade into the ether with nothing important ever happening here is just absurd on its face i don't think that's what anybody means when they say it's not uh special when 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 people are talking about it's not special and not saying that like the universe was created for us that's what we're talking about. And then obviously this planet wasn't even created for us. I mean we can only inhabit like a small portion of it, you know, three fourths of it are covered in water. Um, you're like, okay, well, we need water to sustain life. Not just getting this salt water it kills you and makes you go crazy while it kills you, you know. Uh, but so three fourths of it is covered in that. Um, then you know, so what's that? Thirty percent, you know, is what we're left with. Then you have all the mountains, you know, and then take that down. And then you got the the polar uh, ice caps, and then you need, like we're down to like ten percent that we can inhabit of our own planet that was made perfectly just for us. And then we're not even going into the cosmos and how much of that we can't inhabit. And yet, you know, people like you are trying to make the case that this was made for us and that we were special. It, we're not special. <laughs> That's the whole point here. We're this close to technology that will leave a, allow us to leave the galaxy. Or excuse me, not the. I didn't mean to say the galaxy. I meant to say the the solar system. So I apologize for that. But yeah, we're this close to technology that will allow us to leave the solar system once we make fusion more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's already energy positive, but once we make it even more energy positive, that's it. I don't think this guy knows at all what he's talking about. But you know, um, I did look up. There is something called. Uh, you know, fusion, he's talking about fusion, right? Um, and producing, uh, you know, having to use a, a lot less uh, energy than it produces. And that's positive energy fusion. I, I don't think he knows any of that, but, you know, I'm just throwing it out there because he seemed to allude to it. But that doesn't have anything to do, as far as I can tell, with traveling or outside of our solar system, our local solar system. Literally, that's it. Once we have fusion down, we can leave the solar system. And then we can colonize the galaxy. Of course, this guy wants to colonize the galaxy. That's his first thought. Okay, can we colonize this thing? Can we go take stuff from other people and then just decide that what's theirs is now ours because, you know, right-wing white guy. I don't know. You know, of course, that's like the, the first thought on their brain, you know. We need to colonize this fucker. Jesus. We might be really close for a long time. Nah. Nah, and, and here's why that's completely wrong. Here's the curve of human technology, okay? Fire, 
No, and now, God. so straight line, straight line for hundreds of thousands of years. What are you doing? And then fire happens, and now the line begins trending upwards. Oh my Just God. barely, like a degree of upward trend. What is this? Then what, what are you we doing? have farming, and now the it takes another upward spike, and now it's trending upwards at a curve of about 10 degrees noticeable upward curve after farming boy you are really smart man you did you you thought of this you thought this out big time okay and wow this this dude has got big brain on the brain you know what i'm saying then we get um a basic understanding of chemistry and medicine now we're looking at about a 15 degree curve upwards in terms of technology's trends the, the medicine only added like another five <laughs> degrees <laughs> This is very accurate. Very accurate. All the medicine and everything. <laughs> then we have computing, and the curve goes like this. It's a vertical line. This guy is like a child. <laughs> for human technology improvement. Good one, man. We went from steam engine to supercomputer in like a hundred years. <laughs> That doesn't necessarily mean anything. If the thing that you're, we're trying to accomplish isn't possible, then it doesn't matter, right? Like you're, you're just like, hey, but we learned so much so fast. That means we have to be able to learn this. And that's just not true. We might, it might it be impossible. It's just like with time travel and people are like, oh, we'll be able to do time travel at some point. You know, oh, we'll be able to do it by this year. What if it's not possible at all? What, what if that? Okay, then then we never can do it because the physical laws of the universe are not bendable. And we're kind of just learning about this universe. We can't just decide that, you know, science will figure something out if it's not even possible. So he, he doesn't know what he's talking about in so many ways. It's amazing. No, it is not going to be a really long time until we leave the galaxy. We're probably going to leave the, or excuse me, I keep saying galaxy when I mean solar system. We're probably going to leave the gap. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see that again. Let's do that again. No, maybe let's do like a couple. No, more. it is not going to be a really long time until we leave the galaxy. We're probably going to leave the, or excuse me, I keep saying galaxy when I mean solar system. We're probably going to leave the gap. <laughs> We're probably more time. No, probably going to leave the, or excuse me, I keep saying galaxy when I mean solar system. We're probably going to leave the gap. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to leave it right there. I might return to this guy because he is just so funny. Um, so I've, I've subscribed now, you know, I am on my dummy account. I am a subscriber now. So we're going to come back to this guy and see how uh, stupid he can get. But you know he's not starting off from a good point. That's for that's that's definitely for sure. You know he's not he's not starting on a on a positive note. But if you want to start on a positive note, you know sexually, just go to adamneve.com, enter that code word Brentley at checkout to get fifty percent off almost any one item. Six free movies, three free gifts, and free shipping on the whole order. Just go to adamneve.com, enter code word Brentley at checkout. You know, I'd say it's a very good product. I mean, you can just ask Ben Shapiro, you know, he knows. Hey, yeah, it's exactly how I get my wife to be wet. Because did you know that a wet vagina is a disease? So you have to use lube. So go to adamandeve.com and enter that code word friendly. And then you can get lube if your wife thinks that a wet vagina is a disease. Go to adamandeve.com, enter that code word friendly and get your exclusive offer. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Always good having somebody around that's, you know, a famous guy with the you know, sexual needs problem, you know, uh, in the household that's that they're very vocal about. It's always helpful for adamandeve.com to be selling that type of stuff. So I really appreciate it, Ben. You got it, buddy. Anytime. Did you see my new hip hop album? No, no, I haven't. I'm not, I'm not going to. All right. Oh, well, uh, okay. Bye. Bye. All right, so yeah, go to adamandeve.com, enter code word Brentley at checkout to get 50% off almost any one item, six free movies, three free gifts, and free shipping on the whole order. Uh, and, uh, you know, if the, the, the packaging is discreet. So, you know, as disappointing as that may be to some of us that actually want to show off the fun we're having, uh, it is discreet. So go to adamandeve.com, enter that code word Brentley. If, uh, if you want to support the show in other ways, you can go, you can become a patron at punk, uh, patreon.com forward slash punkapostate, or you can do a one-time payment on cash app 
and our cash tag is Punk Apostate. So if you want to do any of that stuff, it'd be great. If you want to like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, you know, you can always use that. Uh, it could always use the the likes and the subscribes. You know, it's always it always uh, plays well with the with the algorithm there. So any help you can give us to get us out there is much appreciated. But uh, hey, the main thing though is to stay logical, loving, skeptical and compassionate. And we'll see you next time.